For this um, quick intro, I'm just going to give you some background video to look at before I start coding. So um, you can skip this part, but it's worth hanging in there with me. So in this tutorial, I'm going to modify my code to import more than one data frame. Um, so I'll import multiple sources and different formats being JSON, CSV and MongoDB. So getting data from different sources is something you'll typically do with Spark so that you can produce new results. To put it another way, you want to use Spark to improve how you work with data, but then you know you also want to continue working on the data and ways which you're familiar with. For example, getting in data from files such as CSV, Excel, JSON, you know, doing some joins, doing other familiar stuff like SQL queries, um, filtering, etc. Right? And for me, Spark is a, um, it's like a Swiss army knife that brings everything together. So I mostly get my data from MongoDB, which is a NoSQL database. And you continue to see me import uh, my example data from Mongo. But then I also recognize that, you know, you might not have the same setup as me. So you might prefer to um, follow along by importing data, not from a database, but from, from files. Uh, being you know a JSON file or a CSV file so what I'll do there's two things I'll do what I'll do uh, number one import multiple data frames and number two what I'll do I'll show you how to import these multiple data frames from JSON CSV and Mongo um, what I'll do I'll also add links to the data files that I import um, and and the scripts on my github page I've already done um, an earlier but more detailed video showing how to import a CSV file into Spark uh, using sparkcontext.txt file. I'll also include a link to that earlier video um, in this description, but I'll briefly do it again here in this video, but in a slightly different way, different but easier way using the read attribute from PySpark SQL Spark session. So what's different about doing it the way I'm about to show you? Read has an easier configuration for reading, splitting, um, file types, uh, you know, text files, CSVs, etc., directly into a Spark data frame, whereas Spark context.txt file reads text into a RDD, making reading and splitting a little bit more complex and having to rely on your own rejects. So I'm just going to go into um, my folder and I'll make a copy of the last um, file from the last tutorial. I think it's tutorial. Spark. Okay. And I'll make a copy of this one. And I'll call this Zero six zero one multiple data frame JSON and CSV dot py. And I'll just go into this folder and select the file. Okay. Let's update this. Get rid of that for a sec. And I'll I'll do an update um, when I upload this video and I'll include um, the timelines in there. And I'll just get rid of this bit. And 
I'll just uncomment some of these. So I think we will use color armor. And let's just minimize some of this for the moment. Put all of that on one line. So um, in the last tutorial, I made a connection to MongoDB to the Guardian um, user timeline. So I'm just going to do an update on that. So the way I showed you before, I showed you how to just import one um, uh, data frame. So now I'm just going to make a uh, update to my configuration because what I want to do, I'm going to update several. So okay, let's. Um, first of all, let's take out the Mongo connection. And for an app name, I'll call this Twitter. Not that it really makes much of a difference, to be honest. Um, it'll only make a difference when you're using the Spark um, user interface and you want to see what jobs are running or have run. And then I can also remove that and what I'll do, I'll put in the master down here and I'll call that local and we're going to use um, all process, available processes which what the star um, signifies so, um, and I can take out this whole Mongo bit for the moment. I really don't need to import functions because I'm not going to use it, but um, I'll keep it in there for the time being. And also date time, I don't think I'm going to use that, but I'll just leave it in there. And I can remove this bit because in the last video I was showing you how to uh, convert date time to an object so I'm not going to do that here um, what else do I need? okay let's let's just do everything from scratch so I can take I can take all of this out to be honest so I'm going to import some JSON files and um, so I'll build this up. First I'll import JSON files and then I'll import um, a CSV file within the same script. So let's do the JSON file first and the JSON file, let's go over to where my data file is kept. Just um, make this a little bit bigger. So I'm just going to go into data and let's take a look at that. So I'm going to get data from, I'm going to get Twitter data from followers and friends. So I do a lot of um, data manipulation and so forth with uh, Twitter and um, what I'm going to do uh, for the sake of the next tutorial when importing multiple data files I'm going to import data from um, followers so if you're familiar with Twitter you've got uh, followers and you've got friends so I'm going to import data from both of those places and then I'm going to do a join on that data so for this video we'll just stick with the importing multiple data sources so so let's go into uh, followers and 
this is the one I want. I'm going to import um, the underscore M O Y C, and, and what that is that stands for uh, the Museum of Youth Culture. So I was just looking for some data, and that one that one sort of looked interesting. Um, it looks like a, it, it seems to me on Twitter it's fairly new uh, Twitter page. Um, and culturally it, it looks quite interesting that it's promoting youth culture so um, yeah I'll, I'll import that one in so let's just get that path I'll just go back here put that in so that was the M O Y C, and you have to put a full path in there by the way so it's going to be home I always forget if home is, is capital or not oh, it's lowercase yeah okay alright so home and then it's going to be my username which is pi user desktop tutorial so forth and what I've noticed is that within spark you have to put in full um, URLs so in order for it to to work and on the end of that let's make sure we put the JSON file extension okay and that's our reference to our file so for the next bit um, I'm going to read that that data in so I'll call that df data frame followers equals my spark dot read dot json so this is how you read in a um, json file so then we just put the uh, variable in there file and then so what I want to do I want to get in data from uh, friends as well so I'll just copy this up here because it's exactly the same the same kind of structure uh, but it's just coming from the friends data so I'll just copy this and just change that folder to friends and I'll change the data frame variable name to friends okay and that's it so that's how you in you can import multiple um, data so um, let's what else could I do here so so yeah let's just do a quick count on that data so we've imported it in so um, let's do a print and then I'm going to use um, colorama so uh, what is it for foreground can be magenta and no, let's do the foreground white and let's do the background magenta there's my phone ringing in the background I'll just answer that okay so I'm back from my call and let's just finish off this code so I was up to um, putting in this F string so that way I can just print to the terminal uh, what the data frame is which data frame I'm looking at or just to validate that it's working okay so what I'll do I'll put in um, df followers and then I'll put in a type
swipe and that will be df followers okay so also do the same thing for friends the friends data frame and I can see that I've got a few errors in here so namely over here I just need to put in a slash and then I just need to get rid of this and then on the front of that string I just need to put in the root path okay and I think that looks okay so let's give that a run and hopefully that should work I always do errors, so typos. Okay, so um, so this this is the reason why I use Colorama, so it's just easier to to see things. So this is my DF followers, and it's a PySpark SQL uh, data frame and as well as friends so what the data frame a data frame is just simply an api to the rdd um, rdds are a little bit more more complex to query and what i'll do i'll do a separate tutorial on, on directly um, uh, querying a uh, rdd but data frames are, are a lot more simpler um, and if you're familiar with pandas then you've used um, data frame there as well so so that's okay, so it's getting my data. Um, so the next thing I need to do, I need to, um, let's, let's just take a look at that data for a sec. So, so the data is quite, there's quite a lot going on in the data, so, um, I mean, this is just one row over here. That's just one row. So there's there's quite a lot. Um, there's a there's a load of columns. So you know these keys just um, regard them as columns. So I don't want everything. I just want to take um, specific stuff. So if I just go over here, and I'm just going to um, do a query on these these frames. So for the first one, I will say. DF followers. I mean, I could overwrite that data frame, but I'm not. I'm just going to create a new data frame. So, DF followers will be DF underscore followers, and then I'll put in my select statement. And that will be the first column I'm going to get is going to be. ID, um, sorry, ID string. So I could get ID, but that's going to be an integer. Um, and then it's the same thing for ID string, but it's just a string. It's a little bit more easier to, to work with a string than the integer. Um, and then, you know, there's going to be some other columns in here as well. So uh, let me just write that out. So ID string. And then I want to get created at so created at is the Twitter um, date when something has been created and then what I did with this data even though this is a file which I'm reading from I exported this JSON file from Mongo and when I imported Mongo this data into Mongo I did a transformation on the date field so the last tutorial which I did um, 
that last tutorial was was all about transforming dates so if you want to transform dates and you're also using Twitter data you can go back and take a look at that but I've already done that transformation and I've exported it into this JSON file um, the date which I'm referring to is pretty much this one is it this one I think it's that one yeah this one here so created date I did a transformation on that and then created date is up here Oh, sorry, um, it's here somewhere. So, okay, I won't I won't bother look for it in here, but it's in there somewhere. Oh, here it is. So, so this is the created date as provided by Twitter. It's a string, and then what I did, I did a transformation on that. Um, nothing to do with Spark. It was all all within uh, Python. And I imported it into Mongo, transformed it to a date object, which is this field down here. And so I'm going to grab that column. And the other one which I want is the screen name. And I also want uh, the follower account, and I'll show you why I'm going to use follower account. And I'll probably show you why what I'm going to use it for a little bit later. Um, you know why I use it, um, but okay, we'll just quickly uh, put that in here for now. And I also want, I think it's called friends count. And so what these columns are within within Twitter, um, you've got a count for like, if, let's say for example, I'm a follower, then I'm also going to have, you know, okay, let me let me start that again. So so if I'm grabbing data from follower data from a screen name being myself or it could be someone else then that person is also going to have um, followers and friends so I can kind of judge the importance of that person based on um, how many friends and followers they have so the more followers they have then um, you know they can be quite influential people and then you know, sometimes you know they might not be as influential, but they have lots of uh, friends. So there could be of interest where, okay, you know, this person has a specific interest, and let's see who they're following. So that person could be um, someone that I might might also want to follow as well. So you know, that's why that that data is useful. So I'm going to put that in. I'll just put that back on on that line. Okay. I think that's okay. And I'll just copy that. And I'll call that friends. So I'll do the same for friends. of my typos okay so um, let's do a couple of things here so I'm just going to show that data so um, we'll do we'll do a print df followers and 
close the print df friends and then for both of those we just want to do a show alright so let's uh, give that a spin shall we So, um, so I've done a select on the data frame, um, and you can see what we get back. So I've got ID string created at uh, created at date, screen name, followers, friends. Um, I guess I didn't do a full I didn't do a full um, transformation on some of those dates, but never mind. Uh, I'm not going to use that column for now. Um, and so yeah, I've got all the data in um, for both of those. So this is the friends, and this is the followers. So now the next thing I want to do, um, like I said, I want to import multiple um, data frames. So so far I've imported two data frames, and later on you'll see why I've done that. I want to do a join on um, followers and friends. But for now, what I'll do, I'll just import some more data and um, I'm just going to make a update. So round about here, this is where I'm going to do all my importing. So so here I'm just going to write JSON files um, and here I'll write spark instance and here I'm going to write CSV files All right so uh, for my CSV, I'm going to use the same instance and I'm going to create another variable for files. And I'll just go just go back into this and get that file which I'm looking for. So So the CSV file I'm going to get is uh, Netflix, and I did a, as mentioned, I did a tutorial before on um, importing that CSV file, um, which was a different way. So I'll just put that in there, and I'll just put the path in. Okay. Now what I want to do, I want to load that data, and there's a much easier way of doing that. So uh, first of all, I just want to create a data frame, and what it does, it loads it directly into um, into the data frame. So let's call that DF Netflix equals my Spark read. format and the format is going to be CSV and I'll just put the slash 
on the end. And then the option I'm going to include will be um, infer schema. So we're just saying yes, we want a schema for this. So that will be true. And then we'll have another option which will say um, yes, the first line in the file is a header. So we'll say header and true. And the next one is going to be the um, delimiter separator. Sap, and we'll just specify what that is. Okay, and and the reason why you'll notice that I keep on doing this all the time when I when I'm trying to write um, uh, quotes, and the reason for that is because my keyboard is from America, and I I flip between different laptops, and I've got a UK. Uh, keyboard and with the UK keyboard um, you press shift uh, 2 and then the, then you get uh, the um, symbol when you're on an American keyboard now I get my laptops from a company in the US uh, what is it called system 76 which do, which do really good laptops so um, one the, the last laptop that I bought I didn't change the configuration I've just left everything as US so I've got this habit of, of pressing um, uh, shift 2 which gives me the at symbol when I can just press the quotation and I just always seem to forget that but anyway all right so load file And that's that. So um, let's grab this. And we'll just say DF Netflix. And we'll get the type as well. That will be. Netflix and we'll do a show so DF Netflix and then what I forgot to do is just up here we're going to grab specific columns Call that DF. Sorry, um, DF Netflix, and we'll just take a quick look at that data for a sec. So this is this is what the data looks like, and I'm not sure if I I can see the first column. Um, yeah, it's not showing me the first column, um, but there's quite there's quite a few columns in this data CSV file. And so I just want to select a few. I don't want to select everything. So let's. Um, and I'm j I'm just showing you a very basic um, query on the select of a data frame. Uh, there's a lot more that you can do. You can say things. You can almost write like SQL. And, and rejects and stuff um, but 
for anything a little bit more complex what I'll do I'll save that for uh, SQL when I show you how um, to query SQL again so um, we'll call this DF Netflix and we're going to grab show ID and title The other one, I think it's uh, release year. Okay. All right, so we'll give that a try and make sure that's working. So um, let's go find a script. Fix that error. Put the backslashes on there. Okay, so Netflix is um, not defined, so what did I do? Got an extra F on there. So um, here you've got uh, followers, you've got friends from Twitter, and Netflix data, you've got um, basically the CSV file coming in. And, and the reason why I wanted to show you that is because you know you, d you don't want to just import one source of data. Uh, Spark is really good. It's a really, really good tool. It differs from other tools where, let's say, for example, you've got um, a database, and that database is SQL, or that database is, you know, it's, it's only Mongo, right? Um, and you know, you, you might have another database which is only one type of thing. Um, but really, Spark, as, as I say, it's the Swiss Army knife of data, and you can pull in data from different sources, and you know, all of that data then has a uh, has a commonality, and you can then query that data. You can join that data, join large subsets of data, um, and perform the transformations and the new results that you need. and th And that's why I wanted to show you that, because in the next tutorial, um, 
what you're going to want to do I'm going to show you show you some drawings but before I do that I am going to also show you how to um, you know do the same thing for uh, MongoDB right so let me just make a copy of this script well, actually what I'll do I'm, I'm going to copy the Mongo connector script and I'll call this multiple df DB. Um, what I could have done, I could have done it in the same script, um, but I'm just going to do it differently because what I'll do, I'll up, I'll upload these as different different scripts. One way you can import um, files, JSON, CSVs, and the other other way you just import uh, Mongo. But then you know you can combine them together if you need to. If you need to import, you know, JSON files as well as um, Mongo files or you know all three CSVs, Mongos, and, and JSON, etc. And I'll just get rid of all of this for the moment. Okay, so um, what I want to do, I just want to make some updates to this. Just grab this for a sec, just grab the whole thing. Okay, so I'm going to load my Mongo data in. Um, but then what I want to do, I mean this is the old way of doing it, that's the old way of doing it, but I just want to separate that just to make it easier. So, um, alright, so, because I'm going to import multiple um, collections from MongoDB. So, right. So, I don't need. I don't think I need that for the moment. Yeah, let's just separate that for a sec. So the next thing I'm going to do is my app name again. I'm just going to call that Twitter, and then I'm going to want to have this. Of my config and then my master I can just go back to this script and copy and copy those two so I've got my builder uh, my app name my config um, my master and get or create and I, I didn't want to retype all of that uh, <laughs> because I always make mistakes when I, when I type that all right so the next bit I'm gonna say df followers equals 
my spark dot read dot format and I'm not I'm not getting that from a file I'm gonna get that from from Mongo so it will be the option just go here and put in that backslash string and that will be Mongo actually instead of typing that out let's just do a copy And then the reason why I've done that as an f strings because I want to put a variable in here so instead of typing out which collection it is all the time I'm gonna say collection equals uh, museum of youth culture Okay, and so in my format, I just need to copy this bit here. Okay, and the next bit I want to do is just say uh, data load. Okay, and I think that's okay. All right, so I can get rid of this. And I can get rid of that. All right, so now what I want to do is, and I, I bet I have a mistake in there somewhere, but we'll see. I just want to copy that and call that friends. So I've got two collections, one for followers and one for friends. just make a change on that so I just need to the database it's coming from is called followers up here and the database it's coming from is friends down here
Okay. And I think that looks okay. So this bit I can get rid of. I don't need don't need that. So here we have a spark instance. I've got my variable, so this is Um, load data from collections and for the moment I'll just get rid of this and what I'll do I'll just go back into the other script and I'll copy I'll just copy this all right so what have we got here? So I don't need Netflix because I'm not loading in CSV data. So we've got we're loading in the data directly from the collection into um, dear followers data frame. The same we're doing for friends, and then exactly what we did uh, in the JSON file. We're just selecting which columns we need. Exactly the same columns, and then we're going to show that what that looks like to the terminal and hopefully that should work and just one other thing uh, I forgot to put the py on that on the end of that file so let's just come out of that for a sec So it doesn't have the extension on the end, so let's change that. Okay, so there it is, it's got the extension. data more mistakes okay so what have we got here on the end I don't have the backslash larger rather large work of um, small stuff right so what I'll do I'll upload these scripts to my to my github page um, so that way you can easily see uh, everything. So, okay, cannot resolve ID string given inputs product. Okay, so something's wrong here. Dear followers, dear friends. Create a script. 
screen name, followers count, friends count. Okay, let's just do a quick without selecting those columns. Just see what we've got. Okay, so saying there's no data. Okay, so maybe I didn't install the data yet. Let me install the data and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've just done a quick um, restore of the data and now I can run that code and see what we get back. Okay, so the data is now there, and so what I can do, I can run the code as it should be with the selects on particular columns. so here it is it's coming in directly from Mongo um, and like I said what I'll do I'll, I'll um, have both of these scripts on the github page and that way you can just refer to them okay and that concludes this particular tutorial and oh sorry before I before I stop then there's only one other thing I want to put in here which is my spark dot stop the instance stop the session and I can do the same for the CSV file and that just cleans things up a little bit so you know if you're doing quite a lot of intensive stuff you're cleaning up after yourself and so, um, yeah, so I'll include these scripts on my GitHub page and for the next tutorial, um, which I'll upload, I will do a join on these tables. And that's the reason why I wanted to get multiple data into Spark so I can then show you how I do joins. And I'm gonna do a join um, using the data frame and I'll show you also how to do a join um, using SQL. So. Okay, cheers.